Good day everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Dwango 5 Map 7, a map that you may have seen on many of the numerous Doom 2 tournament streams and wonder why Why do Doom 2 players play this map? It's just a big open arena and people are just shooting at each other. Where's the strategy? Well, I'm here to tell you Dwango 5 Map 7 does have strategy and there are some very interesting skills that are used in this map. And once you learn to pick those out, watching this map play out can be extremely exciting. So a lot of people think that this map is just, okay, whoever can spawn frag their opponent the most and gets lucky with the spawns. Well, over time, the spawn luck for both players should relatively equal out. I'm not saying that, you know, a 50 frag game or a 10 minute game is enough uh, of a sample size for that to equal out for both players. There are some games where you get really lucky and some games where you may get uh, really unlucky. But ultimately, Doom 2 is a war of attrition. Uh, there's no respawning health, there's no respawning armor, so what you have is what you get when you, when you spawn. So you need to maximize your opportunities and minimize your opponent's opportunities. And over time, as the, the match goes on, if you're better at doing that, you'll start to get a lead, uh, lead in the frag count and hopefully win the game. So every one of the competitive Doom 2 maps tests some sort of skills or different skill sets. Uh, Dwango 5 map 7 is no different. So, for example, in Dwango 5 map 1, every spawn starts with a super shotgun. So it's not a, a lot of weapon control going on in that map, at least not controlling a, a super shotgun. In SSL 2, with only two shotgun or super shotguns, and you spawn with a shotgun or a chain gun, a lot of that map revolves around controlling the super shotgun. In Dwango 5 map 7, you may think that aim is the most important, but actually it's movement. Because if you can get to your goals faster than your opponent or chase your opponent down faster before they get to their goals, you're going to be able to take a very easy lead in this map. So first we're going to look at some of the basic things about Doom that you need to, to know. And then we're going to see how those apply to Dwango 5 Map 7 play. All right. So as I said, movement is one of the most important parts of Dwango 5 Map 7. Why is movement so important? If you can move faster than your opponent, you're going to get to your objectives more efficiently than your opponent can. So you'll be able to survive spawning better, but you'll also be able to spawn frag your opponent better. So, for example, if, if I spawn here and I take like this really weird wide angle, I'm going to be slower than I could be if I took an extremely efficient angle such as this and just kind of cut the corner. So you may notice that I'm running at an angle. In Doom this is called strafe running or SR40 and I've done other videos on this before so I'm not going to go too far into detail. The most important thing you need to know moving sideways is strafe running. Uh, it's technically 38.6 degrees and it's faster than moving forward. But there's also strafe 50 or SR50 which is kind of like double strafing and it changes the angle from 38.6 degrees to 45 degrees and it's actually 10.43% faster than regular strafe running. But there is a downside to this. When you're strafe 50ing, you cannot turn the mouse. So normally I can strafe run, I can turn the mouse, but if I'm SR 50ing, I don't turn I don't get to turn the mouse. I can't turn. So anytime I have to turn to fire, I have to let go of my strafe 50 keys. So this leads to some interesting uh, finger dexterity things where you'll be chasing someone down with SR50 as quick as you can, and then you need to let go and turn and then take your shot. Now, the Doom engine runs at 35 ticks per second. So if you do miss your angle, there you can kind of slowly adjust it by quickly, you know, tapping on and off your, your straight 50 keys and making these slight adjustments, and you'll lose kind of minimal speed. But ideally, you want to be able to make and cut corners very close, very quickly, and get around the map so you can get to your goals faster than your opponent. So overall, straight 50, very important in this map. It was one of the maps where straight 50 was really implemented um, in all high-level games. If you are not using straight 50, and if you can't get your straight 50 angles down um, close to perfect, you are once again at a pretty big disadvantage against the player who can have that type of movement speed and can cut corners like that.
Another important technique in Dwango 5 Map 7 is the weapon quick switch. So if you look at my gun here, normally when you're switching weapons, you'll notice that the first gun goes down, the second gun, or well, my fists in this case, go up. So if I switch back to the pistol, and I'm just going to go over this chain gun here, you'll notice once I hit the chain gun, my pistol will lower, and then the chain gun will, will rise up. Okay. So quick switch is something when you have always switch enabled, that means every time I run over a weapon, it will always switch to that weapon. I can switch to a different weapon or a previous weapon just before I pick up that weapon so that the super shotgun will raise faster because normally the current gun has to lower, the new gun raises. Well, the older gun lowering is actually done before I touch the weapon. So if I was going to do that with the super shotgun, you can see that my gun started to lower before I hit the shotgun. So before I run over the weapon that I want, I'm hitting a key to lower my current weapon to bring up the previous weapon of the fists so that I can get the super shotgun faster. It may seem like a very small point. However, with the reload speeds being very tight in this game, if my opponent misses me or takes one shot, that quick switch is the difference between me being able to take the next shot or them getting a second shot off before I'm able to respond. So you'll see this often where one player spawns and they'll go and they'll be able to kind of quick switch and then turn and shoot before their opponent can get a secondary fire off. So it can save you a little bit of time. Very important. The spawn frags is a major part of Doom 2 Deathmatch. I know this is frowned upon in newer games and people consider it very cheesy, but in Doom 2, that's what adds the, the pressure and the, the survival of, of the game, being able to survive the spawns and also pressuring your opponent's spawns. Uh, this is a major part of Dwango 5 Map 7. So it is kind of a big box and there is one spawn in each of the four corners. And then there is one spawn right here in the center. And then there's a spawn in, in the back exit. So five out of the six spawns are in this arena. So I want to be here in the middle when my opponent spawns. So here's the first real theoretical struggle in Dwango 5 Map 7. I want to make sure I kill my opponent when I'm in the center or I can get to the center very quickly. If I'm going to die, I want to try to pull my opponent as far away from the center as I can, so then my next respawn is basically free. So for example, if I manage to die out here, and my opponent is standing right here, I will be able to spawn somewhere in here and be able to get a weapon before they're in position to uh, kill me off of the spawn. However, if I die here in the center, my opponent's now in the center five times out of six, I'm going to spawn and they're going to be pretty much in my face. Uh, of course, reaction times play a role, being able to hear the spawns and, and know where you're at. On the opposite side, the player spawning in needs to be able to recognize where they're at and also where their opponent is in, in relation to where they just died. So a big part of it is being able to, to kill and get back into the center as fast as possible. One of the interesting plays uh, that came up in my QuakeCon 2019 match against Jkist, and I, I really like this one, uh, I was chasing him outside, and the rule set was you could kill yourself on, on the, the exit. And uh, I was leading in the match, and we're getting close to the frag limit. So I'd hit him from the spawn really well, and I was chasing him. And he was heading right down for this. And I knew, based on the game condition, that he was going to kill himself. And he was hoping I would chase him and get to here when, when he died, and that way he would spawn in the center. But I chased him to here, and I realized what he was doing. And I just turned around, and I came back to here. And he killed himself, but I was already in the center ready for the spawn. So not only did he get a negative one frag, I was also in spawn position. So that play didn't necessarily work. So in summary, a lot of this game is knowing where to die and when to die, when to kill your opponent and where to kill your opponent, because you always want to be able to get back into position as fast as possible for when they respawn. So now that we've looked at all of the kind of basic theoretical things about Doom in, in this map, let's see how all this applies to actual Duango 5 Map 7 scenarios. So at the start of Duango 5 Map 7, the map is what we call closed. So these four boxes with the weapons on them are up. You can actually grab them if you bump into the side of them uh, properly. 
but uh, it's not used very often. People just go to the outside to grab their weapons. Also, this box here is is closed, which can be annoying. I'm not going to touch on this too much. There's some exciting options, you know, hiding around if the map stays closed. But generally, everybody hits the four buttons and they lower the boxes. And then the map gets opened up uh, very quickly. But the one part of the start of doing a five map seven that really matters is the items. Sounds kind of odd. Doom doesn't really revolve around items. But there are items, but they don't respawn. So as Doom is a war of attrition, those items can really help you and save you just a few frags. So the beginning of the game can matter and can sway the direction of a match. So any item that I get to use, my opponent doesn't get to use. And any item that they get to use, I don't get to use. So taking advantage of the items in the early game can be very good. The biggest item is this right here, this uh, Berserk Pack. Because what it does is it refills your health to 100%. So for example, if my opponent had gotten me really low and I was at 5%, if I grab that, I'm back at 100%. I haven't been fragged. My opponent hasn't gotten a point. So essentially, it's like a free frag for me, or I guess minus one to my opponent. The other is these little stim packs, little 10% health, but there's one in each corner. And there's some on the outside of the map as well. So even if you get down to 20 or 30%, and if you're able to grab those 10% stim packs, it can keep you alive. Maybe you'll survive an extra shot, which could save yourself a frag. So instead of being at 20% health and then dying in one shot, Maybe you can use those to get back up to 80%. You take one shot from your opponent. You survive. You kill them. Now you're in spawn position. Can very quickly sway the match. Uh, funny enough, in the organ grinder match against Hatred, we actually got into a fight over one of these little 10% uh, health packs. <laughs> yeah. One more point with the Berserk pack is you don't only want to use it when you're at 5% or whatever. Um... If I know my opponent is low, I'll take it just to make sure they don't get to use it. So I may not maximize the benefit, but it's better for me to use it for 40% than my opponent to get to use it for the full 100% or close to. So that's it with the, the start of Dwango 5 map 7. All right, we're going to talk about the common spawn scenarios that come up. So <laughs> when people used to play this map way back in the day in the 90s, uh, you know, everyone would spawn and they would run towards these weapons in the center. It's very tempting. I mean, you know, you spawn right here and you're kind of looking at the weapon almost. I mean, you face this way, but you can see the weapons. And of course, you know, you would get slaughtered by your opponent, but you'd eventually kill them or they'd miss. And then you'd do the same thing to them over and over. It, it didn't take long before people realized that they had to play this map uh, a little bit smarter. So there's two ways to spawn in Doom. There's the wait and see method or there's the pre-move method. Wait and see. Just like it's called, you spawn, quickly note where you're at, decide what to do. The pre-move method is you hold down a movement key and then spawn so you're already pre-moving in a specified direction, and then you adjust once you notice where you're at. Dwango 5 Map 7 is way too fast of a map to play the wait and see method, so we generally always do the pre-move method. So when you spawn in the corner, you're always facing... Uh, towards these short pillars, and of course there's the, the gateway that goes out to these weapons here on the side. So the pre-move method, the, the general spawn system is you always hold forward, you spawn, adjust your angle once you see where you're at, and go this way. So I'm just going to show a quick few things with that. I'm going to hold forward, get my gun, just like that. Oops, that wasn't good. And that's generally how you spawn in this map. So that's great for the four corners. Now, the center spawn, right here, you're going to be moving forward and then be like, oops, crap. Because now you don't have a weapon and you've moved further away from the entryway. So that's kind of almost a sitting duck spawn. The exit spawn, you spawn here, you, you just grab this weapon and basically you're, you're fine. So what it comes down to... Um, Let's not assume there's any plays or brain plays or dodges right now. Is You spawn, you're going for the outside weapon, and your opponent is trying to chase you down. So 
If you are close to the spawn, so let's say I'm the attacker now and my opponent is spawned in the corner. Generally, if they're doing this method, I would love to be able to kill them in one, one hit. And then, once again, I'm back in the center waiting for the, you know, the next spawn. What generally happens is you'll take one hit, though. If it's a strong hit, you would come out to the entryway and then you would just fire the one shot just to finish them off. They would be a low health count. And even if they didn't die from the second hit, they're so low that you can come back to the center, take control of the middle, and you'll be able to pick them off at, at long range. If your first shot isn't great, you generally chase them down. But when you chase them down, so you're coming to you hit them, you'll notice I'm taking a wide angle. I don't come through here and I don't go like this to try to run them down as fast as I can. What I do is you run and you take a wider angle like this. And the reason is you get better vision if they, because they know you're chasing them and they're going to try to grab this weapon or shoot off this out of, up that way <laughs> around the corner. This gives you more visual to be able to hit them. So it's harder for them to get away. You can't actually get away before the second shot if you do it properly. Also, it's a lot easier if you do, when you do kill them, to quickly run back at a better angle towards the entryway. So I've got a few example videos I'm going to show up here of taking the wide angle. So the first one here, there's the first shot. You'll see the wide angle, and I kind of hit him and killed him just uh, before he hit the corner. The second one is extremely similar. Take the shot was a bad miss, and while I didn't finish off the player, I did get the second hit in and then ran back towards the center. And one more example, take the hit, wide angle, kill them, right back to the center, right away. Okay. So take the wide angle, take the hit. Now, if you do survive, or your opponent misses, and they've chased you, this is a wonderful opportunity. So let's just say I've spawned here, and I'm going towards the weapon, and I know my opponent's behind me. I hear them behind me, I know they're following me. I can actually wrap around really quickly. And now I've kind of done a switcheroo where I'm in control of the center here. Really depends on the health count of your opponent. Uh, generally, as we're firing and playing the game, we keep track of each other's health count to a rough estimate. So if my opponent is extremely low health, this could be very critical because as they come back around, they may not have anticipated you getting to the center so fast. You may be able to take the shot, kill them, and then you're in the center waiting for them to spawn. And I've got uh, two examples of that as well from games I've played. So here's the spawn. I take a hit, heard my opponent, and boom. Now I'm in the center, and I'm, I'm in that fight again. Here's another one. You can see the opponent. He was right there. And I'm back in the center. And now my opponent was uh, basically relegated to playing the outside while I was in the inside. Okay. So that's what happens if you're close to the spawn and you can chase them down. But what happens when they spawn really far away and like on the opposite side and you got to chase them down? By the time you take a shot and come out, they're probably already gone somewhere. So one of the things that you can do is take the pot shot. So let's say they spawn here and they're running this way. You can take the pot shot and then run and try to hit them from the other side. Once again, depending on the situation, depending on the health count of what you're at or how fast they are versus how fast you are, you may just want to come here, take another shot just to lower their health as much as you can. It's free damage and come back. Or you can play really aggressively. If you find that you're much faster than they're slower, you can wrap really quickly to get in and kill them. And I've got two examples here of that. So the first one is just taking a pot shot. So you'll see, I see the spawn, I take a hit, and I do a little bit of damage, and I run back to the center as quickly as I can. In the second example, we're going to see that I notice that I'm faster than my opponent, so I play extremely aggressively. So here you go. I see that I'm faster, and I run in, and I take and try to do as much damage as I can, then run back to the, uh, to the center. So that's a, a lot of the, the struggle in this map. Uh, you're going to be spawning. Chances are your opponent uh, is going to be somewhere where they're able to uh, take good position on your spawn. You don't have a weapon. And if they're close to you, there's going to be plays like that where you can maybe whip around the center or we'll get into some of the dodges that happen later. 
Or if your opponent is on the opposite side, they generally try to do that, that cutoff technique. Now, there's another cool th little thing that you can do. And that's when you wrap around like this. So generally, if you spawn here, they're expecting you to go to the opposite side. But you can actually do a wrap around, just like that. Yeah, I had an example. I don't know if it's up. There's the spawn. The wrap around only took five percent. That can really, really save your uh, save your position. Now there is a secondary spawn method, and it's interesting because it's not very common. And instead of pre-moving forward, you pre-move backwards. The problem is when you pre-move backwards on the corner spawns, well, now I'm just further away from where I want to go. But what you can do is you can zip off the long side here. So it's the opposite side that most people do. And just the simple fact of playing the opposite side that most players do can throw your opponent off. The one spawn that is really good with this technique is the center spawn because you back up so quickly and can go here to the, the side to get the gun, your opponent, by the time they turn around and see that you've spawned there, they're like, well, where did, where did he go? And you're already off this way. The exit spawn here, um, there's no disadvantage. I mean, you're just going to hit that wall, see where you're at, and then hit the gun. I'll uh, demonstrate the technique a little bit. So, so off the opposite side, grab the gun. There's that one again. Off the opposite side, I can do that twist around again if I want to. And I just want to show how fast that center spawn, there's no opponent that can react that fast. So it's an alternative spawn technique. This spawn gets a lot better. The corner spawns do get weaker though. There's more corner spawns, so it's not used uh, very often. But if you want to mix up the game and switch your spawn styles mid game, really good way to mix up uh, your, your play and potentially confuse your opponent. Okay, so what happens when we spawn, we have only a pistol, and our opponent is basically right in our face? That's not a very good situation to be in. But, there are some plays you can make with these pillars, and a few techniques you can use for dodging that can throw your opponent off and give you uh, good, ch good opportunities. And one of them is the, um, the stop dodge, or the stop and go. Where basically you're full blast going towards a weapon, and then you're just going to stop, and then continue on. Doom is such a fast game that you know, you have milliseconds to basically decide what, what you're going to do. And if your opponent does a stop and you're expecting them to keep going, you're going to take that shot and you're going to miss. So you just kind of stop and then go. You're kind of trying to figure out when they're about to fire and then kind of just stop and go. And I've got a really good example of that where Hatred does a stop dodge on me and it's just uh, magnificent here. So let's take a look at that. So I see him spawn and oh, look at that. Just stop dodge. I managed to still get him in the end there, but he was able to get a shot off because of the stop dodge, and I missed. So the other things you can do is around these pillars. So for example, make it look like I'm about to go this way, and your opponent may, t if you do a stop dodge here, or just kind of a stop, your opponent can take a, a shot, and then you can either continue on, or you could even kind of do a dodge here, and when they take the shot, run towards the weapon, and do a quick weapon switch in order to get that gun up faster and be able to fire at them very quickly. Uh, you can also kind of like go back and forth. Good players know all of these techniques, so we're kind of trying to do multiple pillar dodges in different ways and go back and forth just to throw each other off. So not much more I can explain about that except to give you a few examples and show you how this works. So here's a few pillar dodges. So I faked going towards the center and managed to get out there with uh, Minimal damage being taken. Here's another one. We go back and forth, and then decide to continue on the outside. This one here is interesting because of the, the dodge that happens. I'm able to grab a weapon with a quick switch and fire back. So that should have been 100% death for me every time. But by using those dodge techniques in the quick switch, I was able to not only survive, but actually get a fire off back on my opponent. Same sort of idea. And last one. 
Pillar dodge, double pillar dodge, go back to get a weapon, and then take the frag. So pillar dodging, use these pillars. Try to make your opponent think you're going one direction and then just be able to stop and switch directions very quickly. Once they've taken their shot and they're reloading, that's your signal to just run. Go do something else. There's always plays for double dodges. One of the other plays you can do if you know your opponent is low is make the pistol play. Every pistol fire is between 5 and 15% damage. If you know they're low, one or two pistol fires and uh, they go down. And then you grab the weapon in the center and you're fine. Your last odds and ends are around sound and point of vision or point of view errors. So remember that every time you fire your gun, you've got a reload sound that your opponent can follow. So you're kind of telegraphing exactly where you're, you're going to go. On the flip side, your opponent is also telegraphing that to you. This happens when you shoot the gun, but also when you hit your opponent, there is a pain sound that they're, that's played that you'll be able to listen to and, and follow. So very important to keep an eye on listening to where you're at. So when you spawn somewhere, if let's say you died, uh, I don't know, you got fragged somewhere over there and you spawned here. If I spawn instantly, I should be able to hear that reload of my opponent's super shotgun that they just used to kill me and tell, oh, they're right beside me here, which tells me to go towards the center, or, oh, they're on this way, that means maybe I can do a wrap around or kind of run that way. So listening to the sounds when you spawn to know exactly where you're at in relation to your opponent, very important technique. The last one is a point of vision um, technique or error that you could use to your advantage. See this giant pillar, the fat pillar? It's pretty much lined up with, with the edge of this wall here. So if your opponent is on this side, there's actually an area that they don't, they can't see you here. Now what you can use that for is if you know your opponent, like let's say you fired at them right here and you know that, you can wrap really closely to this wall and come in here and you can take a surprise shot at them. Because if they're here, they're expecting you to come out here and when you pop out right there and take a fire at them, you really discombobulate them. They're just like, what, how, how did I miss that? So once again, using those fat pillars, you can kind of wrap in like that and just be at a different spot than they expect you to be. You know where they're gonna be, they don't know where you're gonna be. So that's a, a very cool one to use. You can also do that a little bit with, uh, you know, these small pillars to try to hide yourself. Even the center pillar sometimes, if they're running down this side and you run that side, you can kind of <laughs> hide from them and grab the weapon if they don't know exactly where, where you're at. So I do have one quick example of that. So I fire there and I use this. And my opponent, he came around the edge, had no clue that I was going to be between that uh, the fat pillar and the wall. He thought I was going to be on the outside. And that was enough to surprise him and take the frag there. So hopefully that explains a little bit about Duango 5 Map 7, how it's played, some of the common scenarios. So now when you're watching a game, uh, you'll be able to pick out some of these things and see some of the interesting plays that are happening from, from both of the players. Or maybe you're a Doom player and learn something from this and maybe you'll start enjoying Duango 5 Map 7.